Oh my god, I look so tired. Hey everyone, it is Monday. It is five o'clock. I've just got home from work. I am beyond tired. But today, I'm so excited because Dior have invited me to a dinner that's going on at Annabelle's in Mayfair. I don't have to be there until 7.30. I feel beyond tired, like so exhausted I could fall asleep right now. I'm gonna go and put on a couple of face masks. These are the two things. I haven't tried this yet. What is this? A dry face mask. Apparently, ugh, get out. Oh, you get a few in there. Oh, that's really good. So I was told about this because apparently, you know when, um, you know when basically your skin looks like a piece of poo? Well, apparently this is really good for it. It's 15 minutes and it's meant to make you look amazing and feel amazing. So I'm gonna try that. And I was told to use this with it, a clay mask. So I'm gonna go and lie down on my bed, put my face mask on, try not fall asleep. I'm just gonna like rest and then I'm gonna like take a shower and get dressed. I'm actually gonna show you as well in a minute. I got a couple of different um, dresses to wear to this. I haven't tried either of them on so they might be completely rubbish. They turned up when I was out so we'll see. And I don't know if I told any of you about this last year. This kit is brilliant. You you can get it um, from your dentist, which is where I recommend, because I've bought this before online and I've had fake stuff turn up, which does horrible things to your gums, so don't do that. But, um, and also I know I had lipstick all over my mouth when I last bit. Anyway, yeah, this is brilliant if you want to whiten your teeth and for it to actually work. I have tried those kits that you can get online that have got the little UV light thing, and the, the concept of them works, the product works, the only problem is when I used it, it doesn't keep the product away from your gums, which is really bad, it can cause your gums to recede, it also hurts. Also, this is gross, but when you're wearing that, that thing in your mouth, you obviously, because you've got to have it in your mouth for a while, you get like saliva everywhere and the product comes away from your teeth. So when I did it, the effect was almost a bit patchy and it was only on these front ones. The best thing to do, the cheapest thing to do, get yourself made a plastic retainer. 40 pounds from my dentist. It is called an Essex retainer, spelt differently to the county, but that's what it's called, clear plastic thing. And a set of three of these for my dentist was around about 30. And they're by Philips and they're called Zoom Day White. Oh wow. God, this is like one of those, I've had a, what is it? This looks like I've had a facelift. How insane is this? This is scary. It's like that, what was that film that had a hockey mask in it? And it was like a horror film? Oh wow. This apparently, you can use this up to three times and you have to rub it to activate it. Makeup is done. Can you tell the difference? You know that stuff I was telling you about, the tooth whitener? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna blind people with my smile tonight. I'm not really sure what bag to go with for two reasons. First of all, I think this one's gonna go better, but I can't fit anything in it. These are the two dresses that I, I'm gonna wear either. They're, they're new, so I don't know what they look like on. The one thing that I know I definitely like are these shoes. I got from Shuts and they're actually, they're kind of comfortable to wear. I've just been trying them on for a bit and they don't feel too high. Right, so here goes with option one. I don't mind it. The only thing is, is it, it's a bit big. Hang on, let me, it's not like the hips. I'm not fortunate enough to have decent hips. So it's a little bit loose there. It's quite cute though, isn't it? What do you think? It's quite nice. This was such a good price as well. It's insane, the price. This is the next dress. I actually, I really like them both. The only thing, I don't know, what do I think of this one? I like them both. Let me adjust the color here, because that's not quite right. That's better. This is quite a dark red. It looks quite light on there. But with the other dress, although it's my favorite, I do not have the right bra for that today. At the back, I didn't realise, but at the back, my bra's totally showing. Kind of 
mesh detail that's all like clear or whatever and then here is all crystals i just want to go and iron this it's turned up with this crease on it here goes the final choice you know i said i was gonna wear that other one well i didn't because it's too big around here and it was like gaping out but i still really like it so i'm gonna return it for another size i think i'm gonna wear this i love this dress the only thing i would say to any of you watching who are thinking of getting it is I think I can get away with it, but can you see it's quite baggy around the hips? Can you see that? If you've got hips, it's great, but if you don't, then um, maybe just, just, I don't know, do something. in the nick of time wow this place looks amazing i don't know if i said but this event is i do believe it's a deal customer event and it is to celebrate the first day of chelsea flower show porcelain handles that go on drawers. Yeah. I'm sure that's what they are. Oh wow, this is the best thing ever. Oh, aren't they beautiful? So we have had our dinner and I'm probably gonna go in a minute. It's coming up to 12 o'clock and I've got some stuff on tomorrow. So we're just gonna go and use the ladies. Apparently the bathroom here looks amazing. Um, I hope I've shown you around. I've really tried to show you around as much as possible, but I was getting waylaid talking to people. I didn't know they were playing your iPod. <laughs> so up this next one. It's really sweet. Is it? This is, isn't it? No, she said the second floor though. Excuse me. Where's the where's the bathroom, please? Oh, it is here. Oh. What's it like? What's it like? Oh, oh, the ceiling! Oh yeah. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. I hope you don't mind that we sit down and hang out and chat. I thought it would be quite fun to do a Q&A. Sonia Dillon, I love you Sonia, you always write on all of the videos. You wanted to know, did you get your hair dyed? You look so different but gorgeous, where is the dress from? Thank you Sonia. I actually did get my hair dyed and I didn't want to do it but my hairdresser, who is like the best hairdresser, I have to recommend him to you. I'll put his details below. Not sponsored, just saying. Um, he, I've kept my roots the same but he put some highlights through here. He was like, let's just do this for summer. And as soon as he was putting bleach in, I was like, what, what are we doing? And then afterwards, I feel like on the camera, it looks quite like light brown. And I guess it is a bit, but in real life, it's a lot more caramel. It looks a bit different in real life. But yeah, he did that. So my hair has changed in that sense. The dress that I was wearing is from the Outnet and I'm gonna link to everything below. 
brilliant question here from Margot Christine. How do you deal with society's expectation based on the age that you're at and then you've put in quotes by 35 you should be married and have two kids and have a successful career have purchased a home and have saved twice your salary for retirement etc you are saying that you recently turned 30 and you're feeling the pressure people are always asking you what's next are you gonna have kids are you gonna buy a house and you're over there like what anyone in the comments if you feel the same way please do share your thoughts on this i think it is the same on men as well but i feel society on a woman is quite pressurized in terms of the things you're expected to have done i just feel like it's really difficult it's like how can you have a career and have a child at the same time i know you can and there are people that do but it's very difficult i mean god how can you buy a house in this country in the southeast it's insane you don't need me to tell you that things like wages have not gone up it properly in line with the cost of housing. People are stuck in generation rent where the rents are so much that there's not much left out of their salary to save towards a deposit. As you're saving for the deposit, just when you think you've got there, the house prices have risen and so you've got to carry on saving. And a lot of those societal values are steeped and stem from the 1950s and 60s where it was still tough to buy a house, but you could buy one. Where it was normal to meet someone and get married at like 20 and have a baby by 25. Where as the woman you stayed at home and you looked after the house and you didn't have to have a job. So therefore it probably was easier to raise a family. And I think that those values and those pressures that are put upon us are slightly unrealistic now. Next question is from the glam and grit. You wanna know, hi Sophie, what do you think the most pertinent life lesson you have learnt to date is? And something more superficial, would you ever consider getting a lob? To start with the first question, this sounds really weird, but for every day or like chapter of my life, I always try and look at what lesson was to be learnt there. Whenever something bad happens, happens. I saw this quote actually the other day and it's so true. It was like, I have learned so much from my failures. I want to go and make a few more failures so that I can learn from them. And it's so true. The biggest thing I have learned is that I don't need anyone else to do what I want to do in life. I don't need anyone to help me get to where I want to be. That sounds really big headed, but I'm saying it because I feel like again, as women, it's almost like if someone sees you and you've got stuff, oh, you must have a man paying for that. If you've climbed your way up really high in the in a career. Oh, you must have a male boss that's got you up to that. And I think it's such an outdated um, way of seeing it. And you know, I see this a lot on YouTube, you know, my car videos, a lot of the comments that I get from men are misogynistic. My block list on YouTube of, of bad words, it reads like a bad porno. <laughs> it is bad, okay? But I feel like that has been one of my biggest lessons. I don't need, anyone you know if you want something enough you can go and get it you don't need other people to enable you to get there as for getting a lob which i think is is that a long bob i wouldn't cut my hair i think at the moment what have i got like medium length no i wouldn't do it to be honest i had a bob several years ago and it aged me i think that sometimes some people suit shorter hair I really like, you know, when you get it about this length and then you have like blonde on the ends and it's like wavy and like a bit messy. I love that look, but on me, it ages me. The next question is from, and please excuse me if I pronounce this wrong, because you know what it's like on Instagram? Because it's one word. Sometimes it's one word that isn't meant to read anything. Other times it is. Margen blogs, I think is how you pronounce it. You want to know what makes your heart smile and do you have a style icon? What makes my heart smile is my husband. He is just the best. Uh, do I have a style icon? Not really, no. I feel like I've always had, even going back to when I was like 13, I've always had a style that I've really liked and it's like that preppy blazer jacket or even like that clueless look, you know, where you have like a check top with a matching skirt. That's always been how I feel comfortable dressing. Hey Sophie, my question is, are there any things that you would consider stupid or unnecessary purchases that you made when you were younger? You're in your final year of uni and any financial tips would be brilliant. I made so many unnecessary and stupid purchases for the main reason that you get your student loan and you're like, whoa, I'm like a millionaire. I'm gonna go and spend a load of money. I was buying a new outfit pretty, like in my first year, it wasn't just me, my friends. It would be like, we're going out tonight. Let's go and buy a whole new outfit. And we did that 
every night. It was just the normal thing. And I didn't realize how fast my money was going down because I'd never had to budget that amount of money before. So I want to say that everything I bought in university was a complete waste of time. You're considering getting the Gucci Marmont belt. Would I recommend it? I would. It's a good belt and it's been in for so long. I know I've said before it's like in the blogger starter kit but really who cares? It looks quite nice on an outfit so I would recommend it. Queen though, you want to know how do you deal with the pressure society puts on you? Love your outfit by the way. Goes back to that question earlier, doesn't it? And I wonder how many others of you watch also feel the same pressures. I just don't really care. I live my life. I do what makes me happy. I don't worry about what society thinks and I think it also as I said earlier it depends on the friends you've got when you're friends with people that are like-minded you worry less the next question and I'm gonna read out a few of your names because quite a few of you have written to me about the topic of weight weight loss weight management and fitness and so that I include you all I'm just gonna read out your names Deborah W297 you have asked the question about how do you keep up the momentum to keep fit and healthy you've done so for eight months but you're starting to find it hard to keep going Asha Pikizi I know that's wrong how do you maintain such a slim figure is there a particular routine or diet that you follow? I'm actively trying to lose weight and I've lost almost two stones so far since hearing your weight loss story and your recommendation for my fitness pal. Stacey Galbreath, hello Stacey. You want to know if it's not too cheeky, would you ever consider posting food videos, like recipes, etc., what you put in salads? Tahimina, I think is how you pronounce your name. You've also said that you want to know how I've lost the weight, how I've become so slim, because you've seen in previous weight loss videos, you've seen the journey, but it was in parts. The way I did it, bit of background. So I quit my job in 2015 and 2015 all the way through 2016, when I think back to those years, it was like high stress because I quit this job and I was trying to earn the money to pay the mortgage and pay all the bills and I was my diet went downhill plus as well I was not moving about as much when I've been in my job previously you come into the office you do some work you'd have to run back out again and either drive to meet someone or sometimes you have to get the tube to meet someone you were always on your feet and so I used to eat quite a lot there and go out for lunches quite a lot but I didn't put on weight because I was running around when I quit that job I continued to eat the amount of food that I was eating, but because I was sat at my desk, I started to put on weight and I was aware that I was doing it, but quite frankly, I didn't really care. It wasn't really my focus at the time. I got to September, 2016, none of my clothes would fit. Like I had a whole wardrobe full of clothes that I had from work and I couldn't get them on. A bit of a warning to me really, because I'd already put on a stone and a half and I was only going one way. And I was eating junk. I was eating like sweets, crisps, biscuits, anything that was fast, that would give me energy, that would just give me what I needed was quick. I didn't have to cook it. I could pick on it throughout the day. That's what I was eating. And that was my problem. It was in that September 2016 that I thought I need to do something about this. I started doing my fitness pal and I did that simply because I'd done it before. My fitness pal is really brilliant at making you more aware of the things that you're eating and how much you're moving around in the day because it like counts your steps. When I was at that size, in my mind, I was like, I'm not eating, I'm not eating, but I was. I was eating, I wasn't sitting down and having three main meals a day, but I was grazing on high calorie snacks throughout the day. So because I wasn't sitting down to main meals, it felt like I was eating nothing. And it was almost when I realized what I was doing, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna believe it. I didn't wanna believe that maybe you've got to this size because you're actually eating. And that was my thing. So when I did my fitness pal, it drew my attention to, I can either have a packet of crisps that is gonna be 180 calories, and I'll be hungry again straight after because it's just a snack, or I can have a massive bowl of salad, I can put chicken in it, I can put as many vegetables in it as I want. That will probably be three to 400 calories, and that's my lunch and it's healthy and it will keep me full until dinner. So it was kind of like an education thing. I don't do my fitness pal anymore. I did it 
for a couple of months, it's not a chore. It shouldn't feel like a diet. When you're doing something that's a diet, it's not gonna work. It should feel like a lifestyle change. The way that I maintain it is this. I don't buy crisps. I don't buy biscuits. I don't buy chocolate. I don't buy anything that I know I'm gonna pick on in the day. Super noodles. That was another thing. I just eat bowls of super noodles that wouldn't keep me full. I buy things that I know that in the day when I'm short of time, I can quickly throw it together, make a lunch. So I normally buy things like loads of um, salad, but I put in it, because salad alone's not gonna keep you full, so I put in it kale, raw kale, brilliant, raw broccoli, carrots, heavier vegetables that are gonna take you longer to digest but you also need to put with it protein. So if you're like vegan or vegetarian, you could add nuts in. I use either chicken breast, which you can buy pre-cooked, or I add prawns, or my favorite is to get like, you can get pots of crab and I'll like put crab meat into it. You could add some croutons. There are different things you can do, but yeah, that was the main change. That's how I've done it. On the weekend, I still have takeaways. Yesterday, I, I went out with my friend and had a McDonald's. Like, it's not, a, it's not a diet. Abic1603, you want to know when was the first time you and Claire met? This is I Am Chouquette, who is also on YouTube. You love seeing us both together in the Insta stories at the deal party, and you think we should collab. Love the dress. I have met Claire twice. Twice? Maybe three times. We've met in passing, so the first time that I met her was on the deal trip at the end of last year. Then, actually, then I met her again at a Netta Porter event about two weeks ago. Then I met her two days ago at the Dior event. She's lovely. And also, when I went to the Dior event last year, that was where I met Lydia and Carrie as well. Una Keen 54, such a great question. I can already tell you yes is the answer to this. Have you ever met someone you'd wish you hadn't because they weren't as you expected? Obviously, you can't name them. So this is to do with, I think what you're saying is when you meet a celebrity, someone that you've really bigged up in your mind and you had an idea for how they are and then you meet them and you're really disappointed. Yes, I can say that. I have met two really massive celebrities. One in particular is so massive and the story is so insane. I've really wanted to tell the story, but I'm scared that that person will, will get me. And I think they probably would. Um, and it's to do with, there was a party that ended up happening at this house and I did nothing like that happened or anything, but it got wild and it got really scary in the end. That was the first thing. And that was a, hor I, that was a horrible situation because while we were at this party, they wouldn't let us leave and it was scary and we ended up climbing out of a window and it was bad, it was bad. The other person I actually met about, I met them in February and I was really excited to meet them and they were horrible. I wish I could say, I, that's so annoying when someone's like, mm, I feel a certain way and they won't say why, but yeah, I have met someone. Maybe I will. The thing is, when you hear who they are, they're like A-list celebrities and you'll understand why I can't say. Miriam Kristen, how do you keep things new in your relationship and some relationship advice? I don't know if I'm a good person to talk to about this and I don't want to sound really sickly and really annoying, but Dave and I were talking about this yesterday, in fact, that we don't do anything different. We still feel the same way about each other as we did when we first met. Like, you know when you get that feeling when you first meet someone and you don't know if they like you or, and they don't know and you get that really excited feeling like it's almost like so intense, it's not nice, but it is fun. I still have that for David. He still has it for me. And it still feels really like it hasn't, it hasn't got boring at all. And I don't know why that is. The only thing I can put it down to is I think that when you meet someone and you're both on the same page, you're both exactly the same, it works. So for example, if you go out with someone, let's say who's like quite OCD, there's a certain way they want things done, they've got a standard. If you're like, if you're completely the opposite, where you're very laid back, you know, it's like, so what if the kitchen's a mess? It can be done later, let's do something fun right now. I think sometimes when you've got two extremes, it can be really hard to get on because one person's expecting one thing, the other person wants something else, and that's where you can end up with clashes and arguments. Whereas when you're both like, who cares, it's a mess, let's go out, then it's easy. Do you eat you? You want to know in the future, you would like to have your own business in digital marketing. Could you explain what I should do to start my company in this industry? I can talk about this. The first thing you need to do is 
If you don't already work in digital media, it took me eight years to learn what I needed to do in order to set up a company. And in fact, when I started out doing it, I had no plan to set up a company. It was just like I was doing it. You need to get yourself working already with an established digital marketing agency. You might hate it. it you might be like, oh my God, this is like the worst job in the world. It bores me to tears or you might love it. You need to start from the grassroots and learn the ropes. When you get further up the ladder, and you have to deal with things like profit and loss, bringing in new business, all of those things that you don't learn when you're more junior because you're learning what you're doing, but the further up you get, you learn about that. You need to know that in order to be able to get to a point where you can go and do it alone. If you are gonna do it, never ever quit your job and try and do it. Do it on the side. I was doing it on the side for two years, maybe two and a half. If you're already working in that area, build your way up set up a bit of a company on the side, work on your strategy for getting clients, that's the biggest thing. Once you've got the clients coming through and you feel safe enough, like you're pulling in enough money monthly to pay your wage and to have a bit of money still in the account for the business, then that's the time to take the jump. Claire McKinnon, you have written, is it right to put your career in front of your relationship? I've been with my boyfriend for two years now and I moved in with him in January. Since then, I haven't really gotten anywhere career-wise. I graduated last July. It is such a sleepy little coastal town. My boyfriend is very comfortable here. He loves the area and he has a job that he loves. I have a crappy pub job that I hate, but I need the cash. The thought of potentially moving to London fills me with so much excitement as there are so many things to do there and, ex and opportunities to be had. However, I would struggle to do a long distance relationship with my boyfriend. He hates London and so I wouldn't want him coming with me as he would be miserable. I'm happy with him, I'm just not happy with where I am. Any advice? Sorry for the ridiculously long post. That's a really interesting situation, Claire, and I think that you probably know the answer. This isn't as simple as putting your career before your boyfriend. This is putting your life before your boyfriend. You've just graduated. Honestly, in the first year of graduation, God, in the first like two years of graduation, it is hard to get your foot on the ladder and it's important to do it as quickly as you can. It sounds to me like you're being really thoughtful towards him and you're considering his thoughts and feelings. If he's already got his foot in the door and he's doing a good job where he is, yet he's watching you work in a pub where you're not happy and that's obviously not what your degree's about and he's happy to carry on doing that, to leave you, to do whatever it is you're doing, I think that's really unfair on him to you and I feel like it's all you doing the compromise right now. The fact that you feel that excitement when you think about London and you think about the opportunities and you think about what your next job could be, that says it all. This isn't as simple as you're married with two kids and you need to find a new job and do you put your career in front of them. You're young, you've got a boyfriend, he's established doing what he's doing, you're not established and in some ways he's possibly holding you back. So I think Talk to him about it. This is your life. A long distance relationship could really work. It sounds like he needs to move a little bit on his side as well to make it work because it, it's not, from what you said, I don't think it sounds very fair on you. The next video I'm doing, by the way, I just wanna let you know that instead of Sunday, I'm actually probably gonna put it live on Saturday instead. I've been shopping at Louisa Via Roma and all the stuff has arrived today, which is really nice but I have got this coupon code. Anyone can get sent it, I've spoken about this before, it's just like a random coupon code. I think it expires on Monday. Anyway, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do like a haul and show you what I got and try it on and I'm also gonna share the coupon with you right then because I might as well. So if you see it on Saturday instead of Sunday, that's the reason why.